Once again, once again, good afternoon to everybody on this call. Thank you so much for joining us for Mayor Woodfin's Teletown Hall today. Uh, we know we, you have many questions out there. I will remind you once again, if you have a question, press 7 on your dial pad. Uh, you will be connected to one of our screeners who will take your question and put it into the system so we can see it and we will address your question. Um, we will also, uh, throughout this, we will have several questions we would like to ask you as part of a poll just to identify uh, where you are as far as your opinions on issues and as far as your situation at this time. Uh, so we will give you more information on that momentarily. Uh, we do have a guest call from uh, Dr. Wesley Williford of the uh, Jefferson County Department of Health who can address public health questions. And again, just a reminder, press 7 on your dial pad to ask a question. We will have a screener connected with you who will take your question and put it in immediately. Uh, thank you for being on this call. And with that, let me uh, take a moment and uh, welcome Mayor Woodfin to this call. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mayor Randall Woodfin. I want to thank uh, Rick Journey for, um, I guess, guiding us as well as Dr. Wilford with the Jefferson County Health Department uh, for being on this call. Um, I want to thank you all, of course, too, for spending a few moments with us today as we continue to stay connected uh, remotely for now during this COVID-19 crisis. As many of you all know, we are in week seven, and as a city, we've been tested. Uh, you know, I, I think many hearing the sound of my voice have been touched by the coronavirus in some way. Um, we, Of course, we've lost a dozen of lives in Jeff Jefferson County. Those losses haven't hit you directly. It's quite likely that you know someone who has been affected by the virus, whether it it's a coworker, or a friend, or an acquaintance. Um, and many of us have loved ones with chronic health conditions, which means we can't spend time with them, or we know someone who works in healthcare on the front line that's, that's tirelessly working to keep all of us healthy. So in thinking about some of those things, I think it's still important that we remain hopeful and that we be hopeful. And I believe some of the um, numbers as it relates to hospitalization, um, we can see um, maybe this is starting to change, but I don't want anyone to let up or be complacent or get complacent. In fact, we have to work even harder now and be more cautious to ensure we don't see a second spike in cases. As many of you all know, yesterday a new order was handed down by the governor's office. The order begins to allow some new activities, but it also gives us as local leaders the ability to enact additional standards at the local level if we deem necessary. And this is the point I would like to make to everybody on this call. The city of Birmingham is still under a state of emergency. For the record, the state of Alabama and the state health officer has also issued and is still under a state of an emergency for the state of Alabama. So just because some things have eased doesn't mean um, we're out of the neck of the woods. Um, and so this is why part of the reason I introduced yesterday's ordinance to require face coverings starting tomorrow, starting Friday, May 1st. This face covering um, is an item to cover your nose and mouth of a person to limit the spread. And so as you think about it, if we're in some of these places the governor's opened up as it relates to retail and you're not six feet apart, then the next best thing to do is to make sure um, that your face is covered so when you're talking or laughing or singing or sneezing or coughing um, that there is not spread to the next person. I want to be very clear about this. This covering does not have to be a medical grade mask. And more importantly, it doesn't have to be a mask at all. And so I'm not asking anyone on this call or anyone in your family or anyone in the city limits of Birmingham to go out and purchase anything. Again, this covering doesn't have to be a medical grade mask or a mask you purchase. It can be a scarf. Um, it can be something homemade covering. Um, anything out of your home. You can use a t-shirt or cut a t-shirt. Um, you don't have to wear the covering in your home or vehicle, but you have one on in public places. I do imagine that I'll get a question around if I'm in my own office and no one is in there with me. I think you use your good judgment and common sense. You don't have to wear it in there, but if someone comes in your office or you walk out of your office and you interact with other people, you should wear it. Also, face coverings are not required for outdoor activities such as walking, jogging, or any other exercise. And of course, children two years of age and under should not have to wear one 
um, and patients will not be required to wear one in certain places. And of course, for those that have mental or physical challenges that prevent a person from wearing a face cover, they are exempt as well. Please keep in mind that this order comes at the behest of the CDC and many health professionals, which I'll let Dr. Williford speak to in a minute. Now, before he does, just remember, uh, before we get into our questions, I understand these are challenging times, and a lot of what we've done takes some of us out of our comfort zones. But please remember that we're working for the safety of our community so we can eventually reunite healthy and stronger than before. And so I look forward to chatting with you today. Just one more note. Um, I've already had this conversation today with um, a lot of the department heads for the city employees on this call. Um, we will be transitioning and returning back to work Monday, May 18th. Um, and so that's about two and a half weeks away um, before we transition to fully being back um, at our place of employment. Um, in addition to that, I imagine many of you all have questions around what are we going to do with our current stay-at-home order that is set to expire tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Um, yes, 11.59 p.m. tomorrow. Well, I'll be having a discussion with the city council today, uh, probably um, at around 3 or 4, and that conversation will center around should we extend it as is, let it expire as is, or modify it. Uh, we want to make sure that there's some alignment with other municipalities in, in the region and the state. And so that will be a healthy conversation. Whatever we do, it will be in the best decision of protecting the people of the city of Birmingham. With that, I turn it over to Dr. Willow before we get into our questions and answers. Thank you so much, Mayor, Mayor Woodson. Um, I just want to take a moment to, again, thank everyone for all the hard work that they've put into making this response be as effective as it has been. Uh, it, 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 is, it has certainly been our community that has been able to keep, a, keep all of our loved ones safe as we have done. We, we have, as, as Mayor Woodfin alluded to, we have had some deaths in the community, and that's something that you know, we want to continue to see being at an absolute, absolute minimum, and, and the work that everyone's doing is making that possible. I will speak very briefly on the face coverings, and again, the, the purpose of a face covering – Again, it, it, the face covering itself will not provide a tremendous amount of protection to you personally, but it will provide a large amount of protection to those people around you. In the event that someone does not have symptoms due to COVID-19, which has been reported and they, are, they may be contagious, this would prevent the spread in a, in a meaningful way to the people around them. And one of the things we have to lean into with this virus is, again, you know, there may be some information that w a medicine may be on the horizon, but it is certainly not here today, and the vaccine is certainly not here today. We have to lean on everything that we can to fight the virus, and that includes face coverings, that includes hand hygiene, and that also includes the social distancing or physical distancing from one another to deprive the virus of another chance of causing an infection. Um, so I think every little thing that we do has a big impact. And I thank everyone for all of their support that they've they've given to make this po make this effort possible. All right, thank you, Dr. Williford. Um, just a reminder to everybody: uh, press seven. If you try to press seven, we, we reset the system because questions were not coming in. So if you have a question right now, uh, please press seven on your dial pad. You'll be connected to a screener who will then uh, take your question, put it into the system so we can, we can take a look at it and respond to you. Uh, so we, as we wait for folks to press 7 and ask their questions, I'm going to ask our first poll question as well. Now, just to make sure folks don't get confused, press 7 if you have a question for the mayor or anybody else that's on this call today. Uh, we will address that question. Press, uh, but, but if you, we would like to ask you a question on our poll. The first question, what is the top source of credible, credible information that will influence your decision to return to your regular routine? Again, that question, what is the top source of credible information that will influence your decision to return to your regular routine? Press 1 for my employer. Press 2 for my faith leader. Press 3 for health professionals. Press 4 for elected officials. And press 5 for none. I'll ask it one more time, and then we'll go to our first question. Uh, that question, once again, what is the top source 
What is the top source of credible, credible information that will influence your decision to return to your regular routine? Press 1 for my employer. Press 2 for my faith leader. Press 3 for health professionals. Press 4 for elected officials. And press 5 for none. Uh, with that, that question will be open for about three minutes. Uh, that question will be open for about three minutes, and then we will address. Uh, we will address. Uh, we will let, remind you before we close it out. All right. Our first question, uh, I believe, is going to be for uh, Dr. Williford, for our public health panelist. Uh, the Europeans are using decontamination stations and fresh water washdowns, using sweepers. And, VF, uh, and the Birmingham Fire Department resources during this time to decontaminate the city. Could that be a consideration? It's actually it's an interesting question. It's something that yeah, I remember from very early days of watching things unfold in China. There were often images of these decontamination uh, apparatuses, people walking down the streets uh, with uh, you know sprayers, which I, I later found out was a sprayer using bleach. Um, the reality is, as far as decontamination, it's it's not particularly useful unless you're in a, a closed environment. So if you are in a, a, a small room, say, and someone was sick and you're cleaning up after uh, someone being in there, that's when the actions like that are useful. If you're outdoors, if you're, if you're trying to spray something into the outdoors, the reality is that there's so much air, there's so much space that what you spray out really doesn't have much of an overall effect. So it wouldn't have a tremendous effect on decreasing the amount of virus that's actually circulating in the community. And, and really, most of that is going to be uh, in, in close person-to-person -person contact is where you're going to see that. Um, so, so, so those sorts of interventions probably would not have little to no effect on the transmission of the virus. All right, thank you, Dr. Williford. Uh, just a reminder for you one more time, uh, if you have a question, please press 7 on your dial pad. Uh, you'll be connected to one of our screeners. You, can, um, you will be able to ask your question. They will put it into the system, and then we will read your question on this call. Our next question, when will BPD receive N95 masks? All right, so the first thing to know is that the N95 masks are already here and present in the city of Birmingham. They're at our warehouse. Next thing you should know is based on the type of job that you're engaging in, um, as it relates to whatever department you're in, um, that's dependent on your either immediate supervisor and or your department head. And so as B BPD officers, uh, I'm not sure um, what unit you were part of, but I would imagine you should pr probably talk with your shift sergeant and or a um, lieutenant around uh, what type of work you're provided or doing for the city and the process to actually receive a mask based on your work. All right, thank you, Mayor. So just a reminder to you, the current question we have on the line is, what is the top source of credible information that will influence your decision to return to your regular routine? Press 1 for my employer, press 2 for my faith leader, press 3 for health professionals, press 4 for elected officials, press 5 for none. We will give you approximately 15 seconds to respond if you have not responded yet. Uh, next point I want to uh, raise, so, so we apparently are having some, some of you are apparently having difficulties when you press seven, uh, getting through to ask a question. Uh, I would encourage you to press seven again if you, uh, if you have not to, to see if you can get that question in. We are addressing those difficulties right now uh, to see if we can, we can further, uh, further uh, gather questions. Uh, so press 7 on your dial pad, and uh, we will see if we can get those questions through. Stand by one moment while we, while we check on the technical part of this.
All right. Uh, so again, my apologies for the delay on this. Just to let you know, uh, we have a number of people on the line. We've got folks who are asking questions now. If you were on the call early and you have been unsuccessful in pressing seven to get their question answered, um, please, and I hate to do this, but please, I'll ask you if you need to um, hang up and call back into the number. Hang up and call back into the number. The system has been reset where we can gather those questions. If you haven't tried to ask for a question, uh, you know, stay on the line. We encourage you to stay on the line and go on and press seven. We're, we're, we're getting, receiving a questions right now. Uh, the number that you would be calling, if you want to hang up and call back in where you can ask your question, that number is 1-866-271-5732. Again, that number is 1-866-271-5732. We've got, we've got questions coming in right now, so, so the system is working, but if you have been unable to get through to the system, you may need to hang up and call again, 866 866- Two seven one five seven two two. Our next question: When will there be hand sanitizer available for park and recreation DPW at time clock stations? It's it's already available. I would encourage you all to talk to your supervisor as far as the location of them at various places um, that are city properties, but they're already available. All right, thank you, Mayor. Our next question is, do we wait for the next questions to be posted? Here we go. Uh, return date, May 18th, are we still on call? This is out, out, of, uh, this is out of the Department of Traffic, uh, Transportation. This is Cedric Sparks, I serve as Chief of Staff. Yes, for the departments who have staff that are teleworking, nothing has, will change after um, we, turn, we move into the month of May, so please see your immediate supervisors or department heads. But everything that's currently in place for the month of April is in place for the month of May. So if you're teleworking, you'll continue to do so unless you receive other instructions from your department head or supervisor. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief Sparks. I'm going to ask our next poll question uh, uh, to the folks that are on this call. Uh, let me ask this question for you. It is now open. Uh, City of Birmingham employees, does the availability of child care affect your ability to return to work on May 18th, 2020? Once again, for City of Birmingham employees, does the availability of child care affect your ability to return to work on May 18th? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. We're going to give you about three minutes to respond to this question. Um, our next question um, what can citizens do to check in on our elderly population at this time? You know, that's a really good question. Um, I think um, around our seniors, there are a lot of already, there are already programs that exist in the United Way um, and using their 211 system. In addition to that, there's the BHAM Strong Service. Core as well as other programs on the BM Strong where people can participate. I think at the actual neighbor, neighborhood level, I would actually suggest you reach out to your neighborhood presidents or your neighborhood officers uh, who have a list of some of the um, who have a list and contact with some of the residents in the neighborhoods um, who may need to be checked on, and I know they can help facilitate that process. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, just a reminder once again on this, we are getting questions in, but some of them are so coming. We did have a technical problem at the beginning. If you press 7 to ask a question and were unable to connect to ask that question, uh, we suggest to you that you, press, that you hang up and call back at 866-271-5722. 866-271-5722. If you have just joined and you haven't asked a question but want to, Press 7 right now, you will be connected with a screener, and we will ask your question. I'm going to, open, I'm going to remind you once again the current question that we, are, we have for you. Uh, City of Birmingham employees, does the availability of child care affect your ability to return to work on May 18th? Uh, press 1 for yes. Press 2 for no. We're going to give you another 15 seconds uh, to ask that question. Our next question from our callers deals with the Birmingham Public Library. How are we to handle close, hands-on interaction with patrons? 
are we allowed to wear mask face coverings? Um, well, yes, at, at work you'll be wearing a face cover, um, but um, that's nothing you have to entertain now as it relates to interacting with the public. All right, thank you, Mayor. Our next question uh, that we have, uh, does the government's order, does the, does the governor's order supersede the city of Birmingham orders? So uh, the short answer is this. Each cities in Alabama um, under their state of emergency are allowed to do things they believe is in the best interest while under a state of an emergency in the best interest to protect the general welfare and safety of of citizens. So, for example, if you all recall, the city of Birmingham back in March um, not only declared a state of an emergency, but shared that there shouldn't be a gathering of more than 200, feet, 200 people or more when this first started. We did that um, outside of the county, outside of the state. Then we moved to do a shelter in place order again prior to the state. And so where we are now, because we're still under a, a uh, local state of an emergency, we'll, we still have the purview to do what we believe is in the best interest of the citizens of Birmingham. Please remember, and I hope some of you all have actually read the governor's order, because if you do, you will realize that it's a floor, not a ceiling. So the, it's a baseline, but cities do have the power to do what's in the best interest of their citizens, especially if the things we should be going off are data-driven. So you shouldn't be worried so much about a date versus data. And when I say data, um, do we have enough testing available? Do we have enough tracking available? Do we know where symptoms are? Do we know where cases are? The answers to all of those questions are no. And so it's important that local officials listen to our local health officers and our local health issues may look different from the other parts of the state. Therefore, we may need to do things differently from the other parts of the state. Knowing that here in Birmingham, you have a lot of things to consider. One, we're the most densely populated um, area in the state. We have the highest population within the state. Uh, we have a lot of retail in the state, so a lot of people will be out together at one time. In addition to that, you have one out of five people who are over the age of 60, you have a lot of people with underlying health conditions, and then you have a lot of people that are black, and we know that this disproportionately affects um, all of the above, not only the ability to get it, but makes it hard for them to recover from it and or die. So the decisions we make won't always be what is everybody else doing. It will be what are we doing to protect the people that live here. Mayor, our next question, and a reminder again, we are getting questions in, but they're coming in fairly slowly than usual, but I do want to remind you, press 7 on your dial pad if you have a question, uh, and, and you will be connected with the screener. Once you talk to that screener, we will see your question and we'll be ask it. If you have difficulty on it, we again suggest that you hang up and call back in at 866-271. 5722, and we will see if we can clear up some of those difficulties that some of our callers are having right now. Our next question, Mayor, uh, deals with, um, with, I have heard you say gate, and I've heard people in the federal government say gate, that, that has to be cleared before we can return to normal. Can you explain what that means? Yes. So, gate, G-A-T-E. Uh, the gate is the phase before you talk about phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase one, phase two, and phase three relates to opening as it, as it relates to the economic crisis. But the gate, G-A-T-E, is solely related to assessing from a data-driven standpoint where we are from a health crisis standpoint. And so the gate deals with, um, in my left hand, three things. It deals with measuring symptoms, it deals with measuring um, two um, cases, and three, it measures hospitalization. We know today on this phone, um, Dr. Williford and I feel good about hospitalization, or at least we feel better about it. Um, but we, in my opinion, and I think Dr. Williford will back this up, we still don't have enough data around cases and, more importantly, symptoms. And symptoms are really important. It's not just COVID symptoms, but it's influenza symptoms, um, et cetera. 
Then the other things that need to be considered as it relates to the gate is um, tracing slash tracking um, those who have tested positive and separate from that um, availability of testing. Right now in this community, take away any other part of Alabama, just here as it relates to Birmingham and Jefferson County, no one can stand before you and say, here's our data, um, here's accurate data on symptoms. Um, here is um, the, a model that is sufficient for tracking tracing. Here is the availability of testing and a model for that to work for uh, including all people that live here if they wanted to get tested. Because all those things we don't have the answer to, um, the gate is not satisfied before you do phase one. If you have some people, whether at a local level or state level, that decide to open up to phase one without satisfying those things, that is why at a local level we take more measures in enforcing people to do the right things outside of hand sanitizer and washing their hands and stand six feet apart, which now includes wearing a facial cover because you have to guard against if we can't satisfy those things, then the best thing we can do is make sure if people are out in the public, when you do speak, when you cough, when you sneeze, when you laugh, when you sing, or you do anything else outside of your home, you cannot spread something, whether you know you have it or not, to the next person. All right, thank you, Mayor. We have a couple other questions that are coming in right now, but they have not been posted, so we will go to them momentarily. I would like to uh, take this moment to reach out to Dr. Williford when we talk about uh, tracing, uh, contact tracing, tracking, uh, things along those lines. Can you give us a status on the process on that and where we are with that? Sure. As a part of the normal uh, op uh, operations of Jefferson County Department of Health, we trace and contact, contact tracing for a lot of different illnesses. Um, this is something that we have going on in the background. We have uh, three main divisions. We have a uh, prevention and epidemiology, which captures a large, uh, large bucket that captures a lot of different diseases. We have tuberculosis, and we also have sexually transmitted infections as well. Um, what we have done because of the COVID-19 effort, we have moved uh, large portions of our staff from the tuberculosis division and sexually transmitted infectious division into our ranks to be able to help with the contact tracing as well as moving multiple other um, multiple other staff members from other parts of the health department into the prevention and epidemiology branch so that we can do contact tracing. And the way that works is once uh, the state sends a notification of a positive lab to our system, we reach out to whoever has tested positive for COVID-19. We ask some basic information questions. We figure out where have they been, who have they seen, who do they live with, where do they work, um, where, where have they seen people for long periods of time, and we begin the process of collecting names, and we will contact the people that they've been in contact with. We also issue quarantine orders to persons who have tested positive and their household contacts. And again, the whole purpose of that is to make sure that we're taking away the opportunities for the virus to spread to other people and cause problems. Um, so as far as our, our ability right now, we have been able to keep up with the volume of cases coming in, but in the event of a large surge, that's something that we could struggle with, even with a large uh, increase in our work workforce. Thank you, Dr. Williford. Our next question from the audience, from the uh, callers, will the refuse truck drivers and collectors have to wear face masks while at work? The answer is yes, and I want to explain this in two ways. The first part is, prior to the COVID-19, refuse workers are supposed to be wearing some type of face cover anyway. Prior to COVID, I want to repeat that. If you are a refuse worker for the city of Birmingham, prior to the COVID-19, it was already standard for you to wear a face cover. Now, there's a lot of there's been a lot of anxiety and fear for city employees. I've been able to listen to you all one on one. I've been able to listen to you all on these calls. A lot of you all said, well, we don't think the city should be opened up yet. We've listened to that. You said we shouldn't be open May 1. We listened to that. Many of you all also said, you know, we're riding in these vehicles close to each other. We can't be six feet apart. So let me explain again why the face covers are important. If you can't be six feet apart at work, if, you can't, if you're not six feet apart in these public places such as retail, 
then it's probably the best thing to do is make sure your face is covered so you can't so you can limit the spread by making sure no fluid or anything from your nostril or mouth is passed to the next person. Um, some other news I forgot to mention for our city employees, we will be we'll, we will be providing the city of Birmingham as an employer will be providing some form of a face cover for you. All right, thank you, Mayor. Let's move on to our next question. How did the crisis affect city finances thus far? What are the expected projections? Uh, I'm gonna uh, be in a position at, in one hour. There's a, there's a city council meeting at 3.30 um, where we will be able to have a conversation with the city council around what happened in those last two weeks of March. Um, I am hoping some of those losses were offset by a lot of the construction work that continues to happen and or um, with more people being at home, believe it or not, some of the places that remain open, such as um, um, grocery and others, will possibly offset some of the losses we received in other places. So um, we are in a wait-and-see approach. We will literally know more in about 60 minutes. So I want to ask uh, the folks on this line, our next poll question, uh, it is open right now. Here is the question. Does the new face covering ordinance make you feel safer? Once again, does the new face covering ordinance make you feel safer? Press 1 for yes, much safer. Press 2 for yes, a little safer. Press 3 for no, not much safer. Once again, does the new face covering ordinance make you feel safer? Press 1 for yes, much safer. Press 2 for yes, a little safer. Press three for not much safer. We're going to give you about three minutes to answer that question, uh, and then we will remind you one more time if you haven't answered it so that you can respond, and then we will close that question out and go to our next one. Uh, we have another question now uh, for the mayor, and I believe I'm reading this correctly. Uh, are, we going to, are we going to go back to a 410 shift due to the virus, and how will that impact everyone? The only department that was on the 410 prior to the COVID-19 was the police department. While during the COVID-19, they remain on 410. After the COVID-19, uh, police will remain on 410s. The only department um, under the COVID-19 that temporarily went to 410s is the public works. And so um, I may not understand the question about are we going back to 410s because uh, – the only person that's temper the only department that's temporarily on four tens is Department of Public Works. And I imagine if the question is are we going it's is public works going back to five um uh, five eights, then the answer is yes. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question, I'm gonna to turn to Dr. Williford for this one. Is there something in place to mandate grocery stores to have hand sanitizers to wipe off baskets and for people to keep their hands clean? Um at present, uh, and, and I'll have to go have to go back through and review the entirety of the governor's order, which will take effect. But I do not think that um, I don't know if we have a power to really be able to to mandate that they have the hand sanitizer. It's, it's heavily suggested. It's something that we we're we're hopeful that our businesses will do in, in order to protect their their loyal customers. Um, and it's something that you know we'll we will definitely keep in mind as we go forward. Thank you, Dr. Wilford. Our next question from the callers. When employees return on May 18th, will there be a process in place to limit employees from using time off in order pre to prevent to system abuse? This is Joe Madizic, the Director of HR, and yes, there will be a system in place to stop abuse. Thank you, Ms. Medizic. Our next question, and we addressed this earlier, but for those who may just now be joining us, uh, I'll turn to the mayor for this. When will teleworkers be required to return back to City Hall? City employees will be returning back to work Monday, May 18th. Again, all city employees will be returning back to work Monday, May 18th. Our next question is for Dr. Williford. This is a pastor who is on the line, one of our faith leaders. Would the public health pro official provide an update on the availability of getting COVID-19 testing in Jefferson County? 
will Alabama be including faith leaders in a list of essential workers? Um, so I would so thank you for that question. So this is something that has been of particular interest uh, here at the Jefferson County Department of Health is to make sure that we're expanding testing capacity as much as possible. Um, in the past few days, we have been working diligently with our local uh, laboratory providers um, and local large healthcare systems to find ways to increase the number of testing sites, to increase the testing capacity, meaning the number of tests that we can run per week, and also increasing the number of people um, who, who will be tested overall. Um, and so that's something that we've been putting a lot of effort into to figure out the logistics of it. As you all might imagine, um, setting up these testing sites does require quite a bit of manpower, and we've been working to support that in as many ways as we can. One of the things that may be a game changer coming coming in the future is some, some options for self-collection of these samples. Um, uh, previous, in prior uh, versions of the testing that's been going on, uh, we've had medical providers doing these deep swabs into the nose uh, that have uh, kind of required a little bit more uh, specialization. But there's some information to suggest that a simple uh, self-swab or a person swabbing their own nose and handing the sample back to, to a worker may actually be sufficient. So that's something that we're looking into and making sure that we're doing as well as we can. And then as far as the essential workers definition, um, I think that's something that we're going to largely look to the state and Alabama Department of Public Health on for helping to define that. Uh, but I don't think there are any plans to change any of that at the moment. Moment. Thank you, Dr. Williford. Uh, just a reminder, and I'm about to close this question out, you'll have 15 seconds to respond if you haven't already. Does the new face coverings ordinance make you feel safer? Press 1 for yes, much safer. Press 2 for yes, a little safer. And press 3 for not much safer. Uh, once again, 15 seconds. If you haven't responded to that, then we will close this one out. Uh, our next question to the mayor, once the city reopens, will the libraries get plexiglass as a means of protection? That is something we're assessing. I know we've seen those. Um, we've had some form of makeshift barrier between the PEP department as it relates to interfacing, our employees interfacing with the public at the point of sale or transaction. I think as it relates to the point of transaction uh, between um, library employees, as it relates to checking out books or any other material at the library, that's something we can definitely assess um, and see the feasibility of it. This is what I will say, um, and I, I want to make this clear. Although our employees are returning May 18th, uh, we, have still, we have not determined the actual date that our public facilities will be open to the public. Okay, so that is, a, that is separate and apart. Um, because our employees are returning May 18th doesn't mean um, that – that will be the same day our facilities will be open to the public. Uh, we want to make sure when it's time for our employees and our facilities to interact with the public, that that is a data-driven response and we have answers around where we are with cases before we open up to the public. In addition to that, making sure we have a plan in place and to making sure um, if we are in a position to create any barriers to give added protection to our employees as well as um, the, our citizens and residents then we'll be in a position to do that. Mayor, I, just, just to clarify on that, the City Hall it has remained open throughout this time. I know you said facilities. Uh, well, with the exception of City Hall, which has remained open to the public um, from day one. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to clarify that piece. Our next question that we have, are there any provisions being made for essential workers that have children at home and no options for daycare? So this is Cedric Sparks serve as chief of staff, there's a couple of things on this. Essential workers who are currently in place right now, there are a few providers who have offered support in the form of child care services. So you can follow up with HR and we will give you the names of those providers. Um, as we move into the 18th, we're also considering employees who have to return back and we'll be sharing with your department heads and with each of you several options that will be available to you in the event that you don't have child care before essential workers who are currently serving now will provide you with a list of uh, service providers who have availed themselves to support current essential workers um, who are in need of child care services. So please make sure you follow up with HR um, after this call. All right. Thank you, uh, Chief Sparks. Let me ask our next que poll question for you before we go to our next audience question. Uh, our next poll question. 
with all retail businesses being able to open starting on Thursday at 5 p.m., would or will you patronize a business that is not yet on the approved open list, such as barber shops, beauty parlor, parlors, or nail salons? Let me be clear. They have not been cleared to open, but with all the retail businesses being o able to open starting on Thursday at 5 p.m., would you patronize a business that is not yet on that approved open list, uh, such as barber shops, beauty parlors, or nail salons. Press one for yes, press two for no. Press one for yes, press two for no. Um, our next question from our callers, uh, when employees return on May 18th, will people visiting City Hall be required to wear a face covering? So I have to be very honest with that question. You notice that the state's, the state's order expires May 15th. Um, I can tell you that at, at this point, not having enough data and knowing that a lot of people are still exposed to the coronavirus, for these first two weeks in May, I can definitely see an, an, us staying in a position to do face coverings. But I think um, we will need to assess uh, somewhere around the 15th, should we continue wearing uh, face covers as is, modify that, or totally um, um, walk away from it. And so... Um, if I said yesterday, that may be premature, and so we just need to be in a position every day to assess. What I can tell you based on today, if there's still not adequate tracing, if there is not adequate availability of testing, if we still don't have enough data around cases and or symptoms, then the answer to that will be yes. But if there is more information around that, including a decrease in cases, um, then we'll be in a better position to assess should we continue past the 15th? Thank you, Mayor. Our next question, uh, and this comes from, uh, from a faith leader, moving forward with the latest updates, how will this impact churches in regards to funerals and worship services? Um, haven't had the opportunity to read the governor's order yesterday. Um, she, she remained consistent in the following. And um, none, there are no options outside of gatherings of 10 people or more. So as of now, um, I'll let Dr. Wilfer answer this question too, but as of now, um, there are no gatherings of more than 10 people, and when the order expires at 5 p.m. tomorrow, there will still be no gatherings of more than 10 people. Because of that, I know that has an uh, unfortunate influence on um, the way we were doing um, worship at our physical spaces as it relate, related to places of faith um, that they will have to continue to use online or other options outside of the physical space. Dr. Williford, do you want to add anything to that answer? Yeah, I, I, I agree. In my, in my listening to the to the governor's press conference the other day, and and then what what, what I've read of the order so far, my understanding is is that uh, gatherings of ten persons or more will be prohibited, and and that would include uh, uh, the, the the funeral, the typical funeral and and worship services that we've talked about in the past. Uh, so for for the at least until the next uh, the next evaluation point, those those will be on hold. All right, thank you, Dr. Williford. Uh, before we go to the next question, I want to close out this particular question because we do have another one. We want to ask the poll questions. Uh, once again, with all the retail businesses being able to open starting on Thursday at 5 p.m., would you patronize a business that is not yet on the approved open list concerning barbershops, beauty parlors, nail salons? If you haven't answered that, you got about 15 seconds before we close that question out. Our next question from callers. Employees that work in close proximity within the office, will there be any consideration on relocating due to space? As of today, the answer to that is no, and here's why. The purpose of a face cover while at work is to make sure that you feel better protected, and we gauge for whether it's fear or anxiety of coming back to work. In addition to that, the health aspect of a face cover. What is the purpose and reason of it? It is to say if you're in proximity of a coworker or a colleague and you all are less than six feet apart, if you are talking or that coworker of yours is talking, um, there is no way for them to be able to get anything on you if they sneeze, um, cough, laugh, 
um, or while talking to you because they have a face cover. Um, they have a face, their face is covered. All right, thank you, Mayor. I'm going to load up our next question uh, to ask our, this is our poll question. Uh, how is the leadership of the city of Birmingham handling the COVID-19 crisis? Uh, once again, the question, how is the leadership of the city of Birmingham handling the COVID-19 crisis? Press one for excellent, couldn't be better. Press two for good, they are doing their jobs okay. Press three for poor, they need to do better. Once again, excellent, couldn't be, oh, press one for excellent, couldn't be better. Press two for good, they are doing their jobs okay. Press three for poor, they need to do better. Uh, we're going to give you about three, sa three minutes to uh, respond to that one as we move to our next question. If an employee has already received two pension loans, will they be allowed to get a third pension loan due to the pandemic? This is Jill Medizic again. That is a decision that would have to be made by the pension board to allow three loans. It is something we can request at the next pension board meeting, but it would be up to their vote. All right, thank you, Ms. Medizic. Our next question to you, Mayor, that we were, this was touched on earlier, uh, but this is a broader question to it. How will this crisis affect the 2021 budget? Um, to the employees and to the other people on this call, I, I want to speak as plainly as I can about this. Let me first start by stating um, what you don't know, which is this. We don't know yet, and here's why. Even when things open back up, um, there are a lot of unknowns in the community as it relates to consumer behavior. And so much of our budget is depending is dependent on consumer behavior. For example, um, your desire to uh, want to shop or eat or do anything of that nature says that um, a place of business that is open um, has the ability to give a business license to the city of Birmingham, pay a business license fee to the city of Birmingham uh, for their employees. They pay occupational taxes. Um, for you, the customer, you pay sales taxes. And for events in our city, which we don't know if we're going to be having any events anytime soon, uh, for those who visit and stay in our city, they pay lodging taxes. And there are other ways of the city is deriving revenue. Right now, I'm unaware of any mayor, any governor in the nation that can predict consumer behavior over the next day, next week, next month, for that matter, probably the next quarter. Um, and remember, um, we have just completed the we have just completed April will be completing the first month of the last quarter of the current fiscal year we're in, meaning we still have about sixty days left before this fiscal year ends. Um, but that doesn't mean just because everything open back opens back up, consumer behavior will be the same and everybody will just start shopping, even though even if we may want them to for tax purposes, a lot of people may may not be in a position to because of anxiety and fear believe it's the um, from a health perspective the right thing to do. And so there are a lot of unknowns now and we're not in a position. Every year the new budget starts July one. We submit to the city council by May fifteenth. May 15th, which is two weeks away, a, a proposed budget. Um, we won't be meeting that deadline this year because the proposed budget is usually based on projections. But we can't project what's going to happen because we can't predict consumer behavior in the middle of a pandemic and health crisis. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question, my department was told we'd be coming back in phases. Does everyone return on May 18th or are we still phasing employees into the office? Um, there may have been some thoughts, but not a hard, not a hard final decision around phasing. But there will be no phasing. All employees, the city of Birmingham, will return back to work. That return date for all city employees is Monday, May 18th. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just one second as we get ready to go on. I will remind you of the. Uh, I will remind you of um, the current question we have. How is the leadership of the city of Birmingham handling the COVID-19 crisis? Press one for excellent, couldn't be better. Press two for good, they are doing their jobs okay. 
and press three for poor, they need to do better. I'm going to give you 15 more seconds to respond to that, and then we will uh, move on to our next question. Okay, our next question, Mayor, are employees getting raises this year, and will insurance go up? So my number one priority will be to make sure everyone keeps their job. I think I need to repeat myself. It's a very important topic. My number one priority is to keep every city employee employed. There are many municipalities right now that are having a lot of conversations around furloughs, around termination, around laying people off. I don't want to have that conversation. You should know that for every dollar the city spends, 70 cents of, on, seven, 70 cents of that dollar is on employees. It's not just your base salary. It's, your, it's merit pay, which is an increase an increase. It's COLA, which is an increase. Um, it's longevity, which is a, a, a fringe benefit. And there, there's insurance, there's pension, there's all these things. The number one priority is to keep every city employee employed. And so if we have to project a shortfall, if we know we can't predict cons consumer behavior, if we know um, 80 cent of every dollar that comes in is based on these taxes, that may see a shortfall, then we have to consider if employees are 70 cent of each dollar, then conversations around raises and other things that may be deemed luxury outside of your base salary are on the table to possibly not happen. But I'll take that over no one having a job. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dr. Williford, we have another question for you. Should everyone get tested even if they don't show signs or symptoms? This has been a, a very tough question and a question that's been going, I think, going on across the country is understanding what what disease, how much of the virus is truly out there. And I, I have to say, anything I say here is it, it's sort of best guess or speculation because the, the data is still evolving and the plan is still evolving. There's one one side of it that, that may say, uh, you know, it, when we have a test that can determine if a person was infected, uh, which would be an antibody test, once we have a reliable and well-proven antibody test, it, the, that sort of strategy of testing people on a large scale could be useful to better understand exactly how big the impact of the virus was. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, you know, we're, we're right now we're trying to test those who have te who uh, have symptoms. So whether that's fever, chills, um, changes in smell, shortness of breath, a uh, number of different uh, symptoms that that would prompt a person to be tested. Uh, that that's kind of the, the strategy we're going with now. I think in time, I think that strategy is going to change. Um, you know, I think if we lived in, in an ideal world where we had infinite resources and you know easy access for every single person, then that the answer would be yes. We would just test everyone and kind of figure out where we stood. But we're not there yet, and I think that building that plan is going to take a little bit more time for for it all to come together. All right, thanks a lot, Dr. Williford. Our next question is, the mayor considering extending the telework opportunity beyond May 17th? No. When we open on May 18th, will finance be working eight to five or will we go back to seven to six? Now, that's a really good question. I think a lot of that depends on what you did before, but let's make sure I speak with your department head, which is Lester Smith, and we can see what um, we can see how that works. In the ideal world, you'll have ample notice prior to coming back to work. Uh, this one comes from DPW. We are currently on four tens. Is there any thought to when will we go back to our regular schedule? Um, there are some thoughts, um, but they're not final. So please let us continue to think about it and work through that with your department head and, the, and Kevin Moore, who's over operations for the city of Birmingham. And, and the ideal world will also have an answer to you well prior to May 18th. 
Um, I want to mention to everybody, we are at 255. Usually we wrap up at about uh, 245, but because we had some, we have a good number of questions still, uh, and because we did have some delays in getting those questions, we're going to continue for a little bit of time. It looks like everybody is staying on this call right now, so thank you for your patience with the, with the difficulties in getting the questions in, and we're going to work as much as we can to get to uh, – um, get to these questions. So I'll, I'll if, if Mayor, if it's okay, I'll answer this because I know you answered this last time. Is there any way for the public and for employees to find out the results of the poll questions? Yes. The mayor says yes. What we are going to do is as soon as this call, as soon as we wrap up questions on this call, I will read the results to you, um, and then we will also post these as we post the audio from this call on BirminghamAL.gov slash coronavirus. You can go there and look at poll results from previous teletown halls as well. Uh, so, yes, we will be doing that. Uh, next question, and this comes from uh, the neighborhood president. Uh, when, will, when, will library, when will Wylam Library be reopened? So this applies to not only our libraries, but many of our um, facilities. So libraries, our Museum of Art, um, those two in particular, the, the decision to reopen is determined by the board, especially when they're going to be patronized by our citizens. So although the employees are returning to work on the 18th, um, we really want to keep the employees safe as well as the citizens that will be patronizing those facilities. So that's the library, uh, facilities like the Museum of Art, our park and recreation facilities. Those facilities that have board governance the board will make a final decision of when the facilities will open. I can assure you that the directors of those facilities are using national best practices to determine when they feel it would be safe for those facilities to start patronizing or allowing the public to patronize them. So each of them are working together, reviewing best practices, practices as well as talking to each other as they make recommendations to the boards for those of them that have boards and for those of them that don't, making recommendations to the mayor so that when we do open to the public, that the employees are safe as well as the citizens. So to your question, for the library, for Wildham Library in specific, in particular, that's going to be a board decision, but it's going to be driven by national best practices and what keeps the employees and citizens safe. Thank you, Chief uh, Sparks. Our next question comes from DPW. Refuse collectors have a hard job that is similar to exercises since intense labor in the field. Since face coverings are not required for exercising and it may cause breathing issues for refuse collectors, do we have to wear the coverings while working in the field? Again, um, for my excellent refuse workers who have been with us for many years, thank you all for what you all do. I would like to remind you on this call in front of company that you are supposed to be wearing some form of face masks and shields and other personal equipment prior to the coronavirus. Please be encouraged to remember the rules of the things you're supposed to have separate and apart during this time. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, if library employees will be returning on May 18th and the libraries will not be open to the public at that time, will there be new hours considering that the facility will not be open to the public? So a part of what each of the leadership for the facilities are doing is considering what types of transitions need to be put in place to assure that when it does reopen for the public, again, that it's safe for the employees and citizens. But there's a lot of what we call bridge work that needs to be done. That is, um, services that can still be provided, how do you do those in a safe way, and preparing for once you open to the public. So um, please don't assume that just because the facility is closed to the public that there are not things that will need to be taken care of during that period. I can assure you even prior to now that the directors and leaders of those facilities have long been considering what's next in terms of operations. They'll do the same once employees return you'll just be a part of that process with your leadership. Thank you, Chief Sparks. Uh, because of the time and schedule this afternoon, we're going to uh, ask one more question, but let me let everybody know. We are also, as soon as the mayor is finished with his closing remarks, I will share with you the polling information that we gathered today. That will also be posted at birminghamal.gov slash coronavirus under the Teletown Hall location, and it will also be posted at birminghamal.gov slash COVID, 
uh, policy. Once again, that's BirminghamAL.gov slash COVID policy. The COVID policy landing page is a landing page where we put all employee communications so that you will be you will be able to have a one-stop shop whenever you need to make reference to that. Uh, with that, let me ask this last question to the mayor, and then we'll move into closing remarks, and I will provide poll information. Why are you not extending the opportunity for people to continue working for a home? Your answer was simply no. Could you please explain why? Yes, I can explain. Great question. Um, the first thing to consider and remember is um, – under the state of an emergency, this was the first time that in the city of Birmingham's history we've actually had a um, work from home. The second thing we should consider is there have been a lot of employees with a range of of issues and things they've all had to work through during this time. Some have had to come in, um, some have been allowed to stay home. As we go through each week under this pandemic and health crisis, at a certain point, um, we have to phase um, back in into ability to operate at full scale so our residents can continue to receive the services that they deserve. Remember, as city employees, all of us by definition are essential as, as government employees, and there are job, there's a job all of us have to do, separate and apart from a lot of other employees and employers. With that said, I think it's fair to consider in the future um, and with HR and, and other people, how do we look at a work from home policy? But as of today, uh, we think it's appropriate, uh, we think it's fair, and we think it's right that everyone return to work Monday, May 18th. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before we wrap up this, are there any closing remarks you would like to make? Uh, just to everyone on the phone, to the pastors, to the neighborhood leaders, and to the neighborhood folk, to our city employees who are on this call. You all have been troopers. Um, the last seven weeks have tested all of us. There is so much going on, and I know many of you all have received a text or a call just like I have, that someone you know has tested positive and or has died. And the worst thing of, the worst thing of any of this is the ability not to be able to um, say bye to someone because you can't see them because of the quarantine or you can't attend their their homegoing funeral because of the COVID-19 or you like me, you have to sit outside of your mom's home um, because you're afraid to even go in her house because it's the safe, right thing to do. We'll get through this. Um, I think this just tested all of us, but we'll be stronger on the other end of this. Remember to continue to be safe. And the whole idea of a face cover is to make sure that you're not spreading anything to anybody else. And if you want to add to that, it's to make sure you feel comfortable if you have to go out of your home because other people have it on too and they can't spread anything to you. So continue to be safe, continue to protect, take care of yourselves, protect your family, and have a good day. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to uh, go through the poll results now uh, for everybody. There were several questions request about those. Our first question today, what is the top source of credible information that will influence your decision to return to your regular routine? 68% of you responding said health professionals. 15% uh, of you said my employer. 9% uh, said none. 4% said faith leaders. And 3% said elected officials. Uh, so our next question, City of Birmingham employees, does the availability of child care affect your ability to return to work on May 18th? 71% of you said no, 29% of you said yes. The next question we ask concerned face masks. Does the, face ma does the new face coverings ordinance make you feel safer? 46% of you said yes, a little safer. 29% of you said not much safer. 25% said yes, much safer. Our next question dealt with uh, uh, patronizing retail businesses not on the list at this time. With all retail businesses being able to open starting on Thursday at 5 p.m., would you patronize a business that is not yet on the approved open list concerning barbershops, beauty parlors, or nail salons? 84% of you said no, 16% of you said yes. 
And our last question that we asked, how is the leadership of the city of Birmingham handling the COVID-19 crisis? 47% of you said yes, uh, or said excellent, couldn't be better. 43% of you said good, they are doing their jobs okay. 10% of you said poor, they need to do better. Uh, that was 1,000 respondents on those questions, just to let you know. Thank you for participating in those questions. Thank you for joining us on this call today, and thank you for your service uh, to our city. And, uh, and, and as the mayor said, for being troopers. Um, really quick, just to remind you, uh, if you want to re-listen listen to this again or if you want to share it with somebody, it will be posted within an hour or so on BirminghamAL.gov slash coronavirus. It will also be uh, provided on the city employees information page, BirminghamAL.gov slash COVID policy. Uh, we will also put a listing of the polling data, and we will look and review any leftover questions that we may have had today because we did have difficulty getting the questions queued up and see if we can provide some answers to those questions as well. Once again, thank you for being on the call today, and have a great afternoon and evening.